Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join me in prayer. On my heart, and friends, your image, blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me. Is my life my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation. Amen. One of my favorite generals in all of U.S. history is, of course, the great Virginian General Stonewall Jackson. I love him so much. Maybe the name, but he's just a fantastic tactician. But what I love about him the most is that dude was always cool as a cucumber. You have the Battle of First Manassas, or if you're a Yankee, the Battle of First Bull Run, but First Manassas, where Stonewall Jackson got his name, right? He's, he's standing there with his Virginians, and everybody else is running around like a chicken with a head cut off, and finally someone points to Thomas Jackson and says, look at that, there stands Jackson like a Stonewall. Let's rally behind the Virginians, and then boom, the Confederate Army wins that battle. But after the battle, because during it, if you've read this, Jackson was shot in the hand during that battle. So the rest of the time he kept riding on his horse with his hand up in the air. But he still remained calm. One of his officers approached him after the battle and said, General Jackson, how can you remain so calm amongst all the cannon fire and the, the guns and the yelling and all the death around you? General Jackson replied saying this, my religious belief teaches me to feel as safe in battle as in bed. God has fixed the time for my death. I do not concern myself about that, but to be always ready, no matter when it may overtake me. That is the way all men should live, and then all would be equally brave. What was nice about General Jackson was he was a good old Presbyterian who believed in something called double predestination. So he believed that his salvation was completely out of his hands. He was assured, at least, that his salvation was won by Christ. That was his confidence. And he couldn't change the fact about it. We have the same thing, right? I mean, you and I have the same promise of salvation. And yet we still get anxious. Anxiety isn't an illness that I can cure today. I could talk about daily habits to relieve stress or tricks to overcome worry. I could tell you today that you and I have nothing to worry about, that Jesus loves us and we will go to heaven when we die. But you all know this stuff. You've probably heard our gospel reading countless times before. You, you've probably heard it so many times you maybe even think you've memorized it. You've been told time and time again about the lilies and the birds. You know, or at least you've heard that Jesus loves you, He forgives you, and in holy baptism, He finalized your eternal spot in heaven. You've heard it before. And we, the baptized, we, we believe Jesus. We've heard all this, and yet we still worry. We're still filled with anxiety and stress is a part of our everyday diet. All of us gathered here today are filled with dread and sick with worry. And if you say you have no worries, that you have no anxiety, no sadness or loss, if you come in and say, Pastor, that's not me, I don't worry about anything. I don't have any doubts about my Savior's love, then just head on out because I can't help you. I got nothing to offer you if you're living in that type of denial. You do have doubts. I have them. You have worries. And I have them. Everyone, if honest with themselves, is struggling with many doubts and fears in and of this world. I could probably put a list that we couldn't even fill out this morning of the things we worry about. We worry about money, either the fact that we don't have it or we're afraid of losing it. We worry about our 
health. We worry about our family. We worry about the country. Does anyone really care about the country, really, at the end of the day? Do we think George W. Bush was a fine man or Ronald Reagan? Guess what both of them were? Anyone got a guess? It starts with an S and ends with her. Senator. That's what both of them were. So if you get Hillary in November or you get Trump in November, guess what? Jesus still loves you. It ain't the end of the world. But isn't that the problem, though? How often do we talk about Jesus or how often do we talk about politics? How often do we talk about money? Good night of the living. Money, money, money. Guess what happens when you die? It's gone. Easy to say, right? <laughs> but what is one of the first things I look at when I wake up in the morning? I'm not talking about you, but me. I look at how much is in my bank account. I look at what the economy is doing. I look at what's going on. Why? Because I worry about it. To give you an example of worry, when I was five years old, a tornado went through my backyard in Georgia. You know, didn't kill anybody, just went through our backyard. Still to this day, I'm scared to death of tornadoes. I see that big red thing that come across the screen, I freak out. Why? Probably won't get a tornado in my backyard. Probably won't get one in my lifetime I'll ever see. But I have created so many scenarios in my head that I flip out before it even happens. That's what we do with worry. That's what anxiety does. It creates scenarios. Worries about what we can't control. Why do we worry? Why, why do we give in to these scenarios? Why do we stress out? Well, Jesus says it. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little trust. Or you of little faith. Can you imagine how the apostles felt hearing that? Can you imagine Jesus himself telling you your faith is pretty weak? We hear it and we don't realize how insulting that is. <laughs> it's kind of a two by four across the forehead. We don't have full, confident trust in God as our provider of both temporal and eternal necessities. He provides for us abundantly, and yet we doubt. Look at the cross. I mean, think, think of the cross for a minute. When we look at what Jesus did there, did Jesus sit there on the cross and say, I've done all the heavy lifting, now you've got to play your part? No. He says it has been and will always be Finished. There is the kingdom of God and His righteousness. There at Calvary, Jesus accomplished our salvation and gained for us eternal life. Our salvation, then our eternal life, doesn't ground itself in our steadfastness, but rather depends on Jesus' mercy and love. And Jesus says this about His sheep. He says, I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Yes, we doubt, we lack faith, and our trust wavers, yet Jesus says, worry not, I got this, I've done all the work. Worry not about this life, because around the bend of the great last day, when you, my beloved, will enter into eternal life, where mammon and the devil will be non-existent. To torment and traumatize you. You've heard it all before, my friends. Like Stonewall Jackson, you know that God has marked your day. You know that death will come. But that doesn't help much. You and I both know that one day death will come knocking. And we know that we have no control over when it will come. So we can spend our life in worry, anxiety, and constant stress, or we can be bold and brave. We can waste away in fear or live in confidence knowing that Jesus loves us. And we have both of these natures in us, beloved. We have both doubt and trust, strength and weakness, peace and stress. We have this old flesh that daily creates scenarios of dread. And the new man in us that daily clings tighter and tighter to Christ. 
Yes, we believe, but we cry out to Jesus, help our unbelief. Yes, we trust. Forgive us, Jesus, our doubt. Yes, we know Jesus cares for us. Help us, Jesus, in the midst of our doubts and anxieties to know that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Because that's what church is all about, beloved. Being reminded of our salvation. Being prepared for eternal life. For everywhere else in this world, you're just going to have worry and stress, aren't you? Is there anywhere else in this world you can go where there's no anxiety, no worries? You can't go to the bar and get it. You can't go home and get it. There's no guarantee. But this place, <laughs> right here, is the only place guaranteed to be stress-free. So that's what it's going to be about. All right? This place is a stress-free zone. That's why I'm yelling at you right now. To make you cool as a cucumber. That's what this place is all about. It's about coming here with every worry, with every stress, with every anxiety, with every pastor. The worst thing is happening in my life and I can go take heart. You're suffering from the same thing I'm suffering from. PBSD. Post-baptism stress disorder. <laughs> we all got it. We have it. Because in that thought, a traumatic experience happened. You may not have felt it. You were a baby or an adult, but guess what happened there? The pastor looked at you and said, Depart you on the clean spirit and make room for the Holy Spirit. In that font, the pastor, Christ himself, through the hands of that sinful man, baptized you in the name of the triune God, drowned the old Adam, and rose up again that day, a new, the new man in Christ. A new creation. And guess what? The devil, mammon, the world, and the devil hate it because you're a child of your heavenly father. And they will torment you day and night. You will have so many stresses and so many worries in this life. We will worry about daily bread. And we will worry about our eternal life. Our stress and anxiety, they bring us to a halt and the devil knows it. But that's why this place exists. It exists as the place where all our worries are shared. Where Christ is here to remind us that in our worries, He is constant. He is unchanging and reliable. He is forgiving and calming. I know that none of you want to worry. That you don't want to lash out or cave into stress. None of us who struggle with anxiety doubt and just good old fashioned frayed nervous systems none of us want to be this way today Jesus isn't saying you are a rank unbeliever outside of his love because you have doubts no he is saying to you look at how I love you look at this stop worrying I'm here it's going to be all right. Look at the lilies. Look at the birds. Look at the font. Look at the altar. Look at the pulpits. I love you, says Jesus. I'll take care of everything. Your spot in heaven is waiting for you. You have nothing to fear or worry about. So, beloved, if you're like me, <laughs> I'm pretty sure this week for you it may not be a pleasant one. You're going to have a lot more worries come your way. A lot more anxieties, a lot more changes, because we, we Lutherans love, love change. And it will come to you this week, but here's the guarantee I'll offer you. No, I'm not offering it, it's promised to you. When you come back again next Sunday, <laughs> you're going to hear the same message again. You're going to receive the same sacrament. You're going to receive the same gospel. You're going to receive the same absolute. No matter how chaotic and troublesome your day will be tomorrow, know that Christ is constant. And that this place is here when you need to hear the voice of your Savior that says, Your eternal life is guaranteed. Be at peace. All things are done for you. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.